Good morning. It's Monday morning, and we're going to read from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This passage is uh, one that focuses on the sense that Christ emptied himself. Now, what we're talking about is that uh, the second person of the Trinity, the Son, who existed with the Father from all eternity, um, at a certain point in in human history, um, poured out himself, emptied himself of, of glory, of divinity, and was born a human being. So he became a man, a particular man, and that's the incarnation. Uh, So that's when Jesus is born and and is the um, son of God and and son of man. So that's uh, what we're talking about. That's where that comes from. Um, And so it says he emptied himself, the kenotic theology that says he's emptying himself of, of divinity. Uh, being found in human form, then he humbles himself and goes, you know, further down, if you will, all the way to death, and all the way to death on the cross, which was, um, in the ancient world, considered a humiliating way to die. And of course, you were nailed up there naked, so you know, in every sense, it was humiliating. Um, but God has exalted him as low as he went uh, in in his humiliation. He's exalted to the highest point that he can be exalted, and every knee on heaven and earth will bow to him, whether they like it or not, Um, which is one of the ways that we understand um, hell is having to bow to Jesus even though you don't want to, but you can think about that. Um, This is a famous passage. Some people think that maybe Paul is drawing on a hymn or a creed of some kind, a creedal statement that they would have used in worship in the very early church. And he may be, or Paul may be just poetic enough to come up with this himself on the spur of the moment. Um, But either way, it's a wonderful passage that describes both the incarnation and the humanity of Christ, describes the humiliation of Christ, being put to death, and the exaltation of Christ, and all in a few sentences. And so it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. And that's the mind that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to be, be um, conscious of the fact that he, he did all of that uh, for us. And be, be aware of that in every, every um, encounter that you have with another person, every, 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 uh, everything you do all day long, just remember that Jesus um, was humiliated and then exalted and did it all because he loves you. And that's where we are today. So tomorrow we'll continue with um, Philippians 2. I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.